Sages do not dress or behave ostentatiously. They wear what no one looks at, do what no one watches, and say what no one disputes. In times of ease, they are not extravagant. In times of hardship, they are not fearful. They do not show off when successful and are not desperate in retirement. They are different, but do not seem weird. They appear ordinary, but there is no way to blame them. This is called great mastery. When sages consider human worth, all they have to do is observe a single activity, and the worthy and the unworthy are distinguished. Sages do not do acts that can be repudiated, but they do not resent it if people repudiate them. They cultivate virtue worthy of praise, but they do not seek people's praise. They cannot cause calamity not to come, but they trust themselves not to beckon it. They cannot ensure that fortune will come, but they trust themselves not to repel it. When calamity occurs, it is not that they have sought that whereby it arises, so even in extremity they are not troubled. When fortune occurs, it is not that they have sought that whereby it comes about, so even in success they are not proud. They know the control of calamity, and fortune is not up to them, so they live happily at ease, governing without contrivance. Sages conserve what they already have, and do not seek what they haven't attained. If you seek what you don't have, what you do have will be lost. If you cultivate what you already have, then what you want comes about. Therefore, in military operations, you first become invincible, and then wait for vulnerability in opponents. In government, you first become secure, and then wait for insecurity in opponents. Sages inwardly cultivate the fundamental, and do not outwardly adorn the secondary. They preserve their vital spirit, laying their cunning to rest. They are free and do nothing, yet there is nothing they do not do. They are aloof and govern nothing, yet there is nothing they do not govern. That they do nothing means they do not act before others. That there is nothing they do not do means they go by what others do. That they govern nothing means they do not change what happens naturally. That there is nothing they do not govern means they go by what is appropriate for others. All things have their outcomes, but only sages know how to keep to the root. All events have their implications, but only sages know to keep by the gate. Therefore, they fathom the fathomless and reach the end of the endless. They notice things without being blinded. They respond like echoes without wearing out. This is called celestial understanding. Therefore, those who attain the Tao are weak in ambition but strong in works. Their hearts are open and their response is appropriate. Sages do not need authority to be noble, do not need wealth to be rich, and do not need power to be strong. Peaceful and empty, they are not subject to outside influences. They fly freely with evolution. Thus they leave gold hidden in the mountains. They leave pearls hidden in the sea. They do not see profit in material possessions. They do not covet power and fame. They do not take pleasure in ease. They are not saddened in straits. They do not find comfort in high social status. They do not find peril in low social status. Their body, mind, energy, and will each rests in its proper place. The body is the house of life. Energy is the basis of life. Mind is the regulator of life. When one of these loses its place, the other two suffer. Sages teach people to keep the body, energy, and mind in their places so that they carry out their functions without mutual interference. The body is ruined if it is kept in a situation that is not comfortable. Energy is drained if it is used in a way that is not conducive to fulfillment. The mind becomes dim if it is used in a way that is not appropriate. It is imperative to be wary of these three things. The reason one does not wear a leather coat in summer is not to spare the coat, but because it is too warm. 
The reason one does not use a fan in winter is not disdain for fans, but because it is too cool. Sages eat according to the size of their bellies and dress according to the size of their bodies, adjusting to the needs and no more. So how could a mind defiled by greed arise in them? Therefore, those who are capable of leading the world are those who have no ambition to use the world. Those who are capable of sustaining fame are those who do nothing excessive to seek it. When you truly understand human nature and destiny, kindness and justice are naturally included. Ups and downs cannot disturb your mind. When nothing covers the spirit and nothing burdens the mind, you experience penetrating clarity and expansive outreach. Serene, without preoccupation, not fixated on anything, dealing with everything calmly, you are not susceptible to corruption by sensuality. Rhetoric cannot sway you. Beauty cannot influence you. Intellectuals cannot move you. Power mongers cannot frighten you. This is the freedom of real people.